Hello! So I am back with more fun and enlightening pregnancy and labour based video content. Hopefully you're not bored of it yet. So today I thought I would share with you my kind of new mum slash postpartum labour recovery essentials because I don't know about anybody else that's a first time mum but I was so prepared for like the labour to be difficult and the kind of pain and things like that and we'd done hypnobirthing and I felt like I was like zen and ready for the birth but the kind of after baby's here postpartum recovery part of things hit me like a lorry in the face so I wasn't expecting it to be quite as horrific as it is. I am eight days postpartum today hurrah, and just about starting to sort of feel a little bit normal. I left the house for the first time today so that was good but yeah it is tough and if you just a caveat here at the beginning if the words vagina slash fanny in the UK we colloquially use the word fanny for vagina rather than bum which I think they do in America so if you're watching for America and I keep saying fanny I mean vagina but yeah if those words offend you or if you're of a sensitive disposition then maybe just don't watch this video and if you're happy to watch it then yeah I don't know just 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 be nice maybe like because yeah it can be kind of embarrassing I guess but also I think it's really important to share this sort of thing because like I said I was really unprepared and I think you just need to talk about these things it's not embarrassing you just pushed a baby out and that is no mean feat so the best you can do or the least you can do is look after everything downstairs and be prepared and ready to know what to expect so without further ado I shall share my fun list of uh, products that I have not been able to live without. Yeah where shall I start? I'll start with these because then I can move them that way. So basically post delivery things down there can either tear um, or get very very swollen so I will be honest I tore I had a second degree tear which is muscle and skin and it did require stitches I was hoping that having a water birth and being all calm and zen I wouldn't tear but hey ho I did and so I did need stitches and that has been incredibly uncomfortable so the first thing that I would say if you're in that position and you have had stitches they will give you painkillers straight away but it's worth stocking up because you're not going to want to leave the house on paracetamol and ibuprofen and take them every eight hours or like kind of like I did again I've got no medical advice I'm not a doctor but I'm just saying what I did but yeah stock up on those painkillers and anti-inflammatories because it is painful and it is swollen and you just want to you just want to not be dealing with that whilst you're also dealing with your newborn baby and everything else that comes with it so yeah get yourself some painkillers <laughs> make sure that you're keeping a record of or getting your partner to keep a record of when you're taking them so you know when you're ready to take your next dose because that is really helpful jack's been really good at that so yeah medicinal painkillers is good arnica tablets i've heard are amazing to help reduce swelling more quickly and help things heal i didn't get around to buying any which is really annoying and i went to buy some today and they didn't have any boots so i still don't have any but maybe i'll get some i've heard they're good maybe get those so yes on top of that so you've just delivered a baby you might have stitches everything like I said is very swollen really uncomfortable sitting down is just not even an option it's so painful so I have one of these really fun are they like hemorrhoid Pipe, like bum piles pillows I guess is what they are my dad had had these are good for post-pregnancy thanks for doing the research dad and so he got me one of these from like a I think it was like a mobility shop there's one in Southampton that was kind of near us so he just walked down and grabbed it and this has been an absolute like fanny saver because being able to just kind of sit on this squashy pillow where there is no pressure on the downstairs has been really good and even though I have not been able to do a lot of sitting anywhere at all because it hurts that much even just like laying in bed or like being propped up a little bit especially while you're breastfeeding on this has been really good so it just you blow it up it's got a little inflated tube I don't think they're very expensive but yeah it's really good I would definitely invest in one of those whether you have stitches or not even if you're just a little bit swollen this is very good and very comfortable and makes things easier so in terms of taking care of downstairs lady garden postpartum 
you are likely to have, as well as the pain, a lot of bleeding. I don't think I quite anticipated how much blood there would be after, because I guess your entire uterus that's been carrying the baby needs to shed itself again, so it's kind of like the biggest period of your entire life, and yeah, you kind of want to contain that. So I have been using good old massive maternity pads. If you've had stitches, you want to make sure you don't get an infection in them because that can happen very easily what with everything down there having to be used and so changing these every single time you go for a wee is an absolute essential and combine these with a nice big pair of pants like a good old supportive big pair of pants to hold it in stick that in it and then on top of these this is my this is my proper top tips i would invest in these two products so when I had my baby shower, my, be my best friend Gemma made me a fanny pack, which was a bum bag, as we call them in the UK, but fanny pack in America, that basically contained everything that I would need for caring for downstairs after labour. So obviously for most baby showers, people get you cute little baby gifts and like baby clothes and stuff like that. But Gemma was like, no, I'm gonna ask everybody I know that's had a baby what they really could have done with or what they found totally essential for the kind of postpartum recovery side of things. And I'm just gonna fill you a fanny pack full of those things. So the things that I've used the most out of it are she got me the big pants and she got me a couple of packs of maternity pads, which I blitzed through. But also this has been a lifesaver. So these are multi-gyne maternity compressors, direct relief for the vulva and perineum after childbirth. They basically come, I think they're from Boots, but they come in little sachets like this and they are like a medicated gel covered sort of little compress really and you basically just rip the top off open it out flat and lay it on top of your maternity pad and it kind of gets in direct contact with your your poor poor vagina and the wounds that are there and it kind of creates a moist environment that isn't like a infection inducing moist environment it says duh, 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 after childbirth women often experience intense discomfort yeah, that's true, in the immediate external area. The delicate tissue of the vulva suffers trauma during childbirth, which can result in, bur in a burning sensation and swelling. Tears, incisions and stitches can also result in sensitive skin. Amen to that. multi guy maternity compresses are pads with a bioactive gel containing two QR complex that offers soothing relief for burning sensation, soreness and sensitivity and also counteracts harmful bacteria to create a moist wound environment to support healing. All of those sound like really good things and they've, they're actually really nice and cooling and comfortable and yeah, touch wood, thus far they seem to be working. And it says you can literally just keep using them, so every time you change a pad, stick another one in. But I've been kind of using them on rotation, <laughs> such fun facts eh, with these. These are Tux medicated cooling pads for hemorrhoids which I don't have, thank God, one of the things I don't have. But they're infused with witch hazel and they are also super, super good for postpartum recovery. So they come in this tub and it's basically, it looks like those little disposable sort of makeup remover pads, but they're just little wet, cold wipes sort of things. And basically what I've been doing is taking like three of them and like laying them across the pad and then placing it in and against and it's really cooling and really nice and um, soothing and I literally love these so definitely these two things for helping soothe everything down there are a must and on top of that again another thing that <laughs> another thing that good old Gemma bought me are these so these are just from Boots they are cleansing wipes with cooling witch hazel and they gently cleanse hemorrhoid prone areas these have been a godsend for when you go for a number two, shall I say, post-birth because nothing can prepare you for when you need to go for your first number two after childbirth. It's, especially if you have stitches, it's very uncomfortable, it's absolutely terrifying and it feels like everything's just gonna turn inside out or something, it's just the worst. And scratching around with toilet paper is the last thing you wanna be doing. So these have again been really cooling and soothing and good on the whole area down there and I wouldn't have bought these because I wouldn't have even thought about that but Gemma obviously did so these are great. And then for the, well for helping you I guess with this number two scenario I would definitely definitely recommend buying some lactulose. 
so <laughs> so glamorous eh? but lactulose is essentially like a weird syrupy thing that is a stool softener it's not a laxative because you don't want to take any kind of laxatives you also don't want to eat like prunes and things like that if you are breastfeeding because they're having a laxative effect on you and they also do the same on the baby so you, do, you don't want that newborns poo enough already you do not want to be adding to that so yeah the lactulose however just it apparently acts by drawing water from your body out into your like intestines to help soften everything and just make it a little bit easier to go which is what you want when everything is really really sensitive and you just want it to be easy and pain free so yeah I would get some of that as well I think I've got it in like boots or something again it's like four pounds but it's really good and you can just have little mini top-up doses every day until everything's healed and it just makes things so that's the number two situation. For having a wee postpartum, these are amazing. So this is like a, I've been calling it a fanny bottle, but it's like, I think they call it like a personal douche or something, which is kind of flaws. But it's like a squeezy bottle with a angled little shower head tip on the end. And after every wee, fill it up with warm water and then just basically hold it down there and squeeze and basically wash the whole area because yeah I really really don't want an infection down there as well and it can be quite painful when everything's burning when you've you know weeing after childbirth so this really helps so you can either squirt it afterwards to clean the whole area or lots of people said they kind of use it to whilst they're weeing just squirt and dilute everything as well if you're in hospital this is definitely a godsend i was obviously at home for the labor but i've still been using it it's been by the toilet for the last eight days and i use it every single time and it's really good because yeah, lots of people said have a sports water bottle or have a cup of water and just slosh it over yourself every time you go for a wee. But this is really convenient and I think it was like £2.50 on eBay. I will link to everything down below in the description. But yeah, this is probably my number one must get for postpartum recovery because it's just really freaking good. And once it's done, once I'm done with it for this, I feel like it would be a great bath toy for the baby so it doesn't actually come into contact with your vagina so I think we can reuse that I like it and then in terms of caring for everything down there and helping promote the healing it's been really useful for me I found to have little shallow baths like just enough to kind of sit in and soothe everything in and yeah not be in a massive long bath because you don't want to dissolve your stitches but just like five minute sit baths to like clean the area and soothe it a few times a day um, and I have been using Epsom salt in that and I also got Himalayan rock salt that I've been using as well kind of on rotation <laughs> this was another Gemma purchase from the fanny pack but yeah it's really really good and yeah I think it's helping with the healing and soothing and cleansing of the wound area so get some of that if you can on top of that going from the vagina area upwards like i said if you're breastfeeding holy moly this is a whole new fun ball game that again i wasn't anticipating would be so hard so i guess i assumed i would have like cracked sore nipples a little bit if baby's struggling to latch but i don't think i was prepared for the leaking milk everywhere once your milk comes in the horribly painful engorgement that also kind of comes hand in hand with when your milk comes in and just quite how painful it is when baby is learning to latch or isn't latching properly and has too shallow a latch and basically just shreds shreds your nipple so yeah caring for the boob side of things there are a few things that i absolutely love and have been really really useful so first thing is a really good maternity bra so i'm wearing one now they're really really useful to like clip off breastfeed clip back on and yeah easy access and just so comfortable so i've got a couple of these i'm gonna buy some more but these are by a brand called bravado you can get them online they are super soft and stretchy this one has a traditional kind of bra closure back the one i'm wearing now is like a racer back like a sports bra sort of thing and i think i prefer this one i'm gonna get some more with a racer back just like fling over your head and pull on pull off sort of thing they're super comfy and really, really soft, no underwiring, so they're not digging in under your sensitive boobs. The actual clip system that they use is really nice and really, really easy, and I've got on with that really well. And I, yeah, they're, like I said, they're just really soft and easy to wash and easy to use, and I've basically been... That's my cat's shrieking in the background. Luna! Shh! Luna! I 
think she's done. She might be done. Anyway, she clearly does not approve of the nursing bras. But yeah, so these are amazing. I've been living in them. I discovered very quickly that you can't just sleep with no bra and a nightshirt when you're breastfeeding because you'll wake up and think the baby has soaked through the nappy. And in fact, no, you have just drenched your baby and yourself in milk, which is really nice. So they're just really comfortable and really soft and they don't put any pressure on your boobs or cause any kind of discomfort. And I've been wearing these 24 seven. Hand in hand with these, I have, I've been using reusable breast pads because I'm not a fan of the disposable culture. And other than the maternity pads, I have been using disposable ones. And I feel like with the second babe, if I'm more prepared, which I hopefully will be, I'll buy some reusable ones so that I can wash them and just keep reusing them because, again, I just don't like using disposable things. I use a moon cup when I'm on my period. I don't use disposable tampons or pads. And like I've said in previous videos, we use cloth nappies and cloth wipes. So it's the last thing to go, basically. It's disposable. But yeah, breast pads I have are reusable ones. These ones are from a brand called Cheeky Wipes, the same brand we're using our baby wipes from. They're really, really good. They just slot into your bra and they soak up any leakage, I guess, and stop you from having big wet patches on your top or, yeah, like I said, flooding the bed with milk. I've got these from Cheeky Wipes and I've also got some really lovely soft ones that I'm wearing now and I'm not going to whip out for you from a company called Baba and Boo, again, one of the cloth nappy brands, and they are really soft and lovely. And I think I've got about 10 pairs of them, but they go in the wash with our cloth nappies and muslins and all of that. And it's just really good. They're just really useful and you can never have too many on hand to quickly whap in or change. So get some of those, I would, because the disposable ones, not only are they wasteful, but also they're like horrible, crispy, scratchy, papery sort of things. And they, from what I've seen and heard from pals and stuff that have been using them, they just tend to like work their way out of your bra and then they're just kind of half sticking out of your bra, which is not what you want. And they've got like sticky bits to attach them to a top and they just don't work and it's really awkward. So yeah, reusable all the way. These ones are really nice and they're soft on the old cracked nips. So yeah, for when your nips do inevitably crack a little bit, I mean, the whole cracked, sorely nipples thing is, is to do with the baby not latching properly. If your baby is deeply latching, as they should be, then you shouldn't have any nipple soreness. And now on day eight, my nipples are okay again, thank God. But yeah, I think at the start, with baby being quite small and he did have trouble getting started with latching, I think I did a little bit of damage early on. And so I did suffer from sore nips. And that's why, as you can see, I've used loads of this. This has been an absolute godsend. This is Medella Brands like pure lan lanisol cream yeah it's like a lanolin um and it just is really 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 thick it reminds me of like that elizabeth arden eight hour cream but yeah it's super thick like tar and i just put it on after every single feed just to soothe the nips and the good thing about this is it's not like harmful to baby so you don't have to like wipe it off every time you feed them you can just keep feeding with it on basically and it's really really good like it makes such a difference it really does moisturize there's also other brands like lanisol that make them as well but i've been using this because i have a medella breast pump which i am planning to start using once baby is eight weeks old so we can do a little bit of expressing as well as breastfeeding directly so yeah, definitely invest in some sort of lanolin cream because you will need it. And then once your milk is in and you start getting the fun breast engorgement, like it literally looks like you have breast implants. Like they, they get so hard and so big, they like, kind of separate from the muscle tissue. So you have like a, like a weird like ledge, like a bulge of extra boob and it just everything goes really like hot and tight and shiny and it's, it's really painful and basically if you don't relieve that pressure and you don't kind of get rid of the engorgement then it leads really quickly to blocked ducts and mastitis which are whole new ball games that touch wood I haven't experienced yet and I'm hoping I won't have to but yeah you really really don't want to leave your breasts to get engorged so obviously feeding baby helps to release that pressure and draw away the swelling from the tissue because it's not just that they're filling with milk I think it's just like the tissue is flooding with fluid as well and it's when your milk's coming in and basically baby's putting their orders in at the milk bar and your boobs need to know how much to produce and at the you know at that beginning time they just kind of go mental and produce loads and then 
yeah it's really horrible so my engorgement only lasted for a couple of days thank god because it was horrible but yeah i found the best way to relieve that was hot shower and then like massaging your boobs um, and hand expressing some milk off just a small amount you don't want to hand express out your entire boob of milk because then your body will think that your baby needs all that milk and start producing more it's like a catch-22 and similarly you don't want to express it with a pump because it'll stimulate more milk production but hand expressing off a small amount to just relieve some of the pressure is really really good and helps to avoid blocked ducts etc so i just looked at another youtube video actually before i was before the baby was born on how to hand express and it's been really really useful so it's not hard but yeah work out how you're comfortable hand expressing and just do that in a hot shower because the hot water really helps to relieve the pressure and draw down the swelling and obviously hand expressing helps take some of the pressure off as well feeding your baby as well helps to relieve that pressure also when they're really really engorged they're so full it kind of flattens out your nipple and the baby can't even latch on or get any milk out so hand expressing a bit or having a hot shower first and then feeding baby is useful and it makes things much easier as well as that if you have already had 50,000 hot showers in one day which happens and you just don't want to be having more showers and it's not that convenient then a hot water bottle as like a hot compress is really, really good. So they say to use a hot compress for 15 minutes before you're gonna feed the baby, and just to kind of soften the tissue and help reduce a little bit of swelling. So do that and hand express a little bit. And then after you have fed the baby, you need to swap from a hot compress to a cold compress. So I got these squishy, nice, kind of filled with weird liquidy bead things, compresses from Flying Tiger a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know why I even picked them up. I, I think I thought in labour it might be nice to have something cooling on me at some point as well or something hot on me. I didn't really buy them for breastfeeding. And then what else did I got for postpartum recovery? I think that's it. Oh, one, one more fun thing is these either puppy pads, disposable changing mats, bed pads incontinence pads, whatever you call them. These are really good. So I had these down before I had baby because I was paranoid that my waters would break whilst I was in bed and I didn't want my super king size fancy memory foam mattress getting ruined with amniotic fluid but it, they didn't go they didn't go at all baby was born in his sack in the amniotic fluid in the waters they never went it's kind of strange but that's a whole other story but yeah these disposable bed pads have been really good postpartum as well to just have them under the sheet just in case there are any leakages from your maternity pads etc or like i said if your boobs decide to flood the bed these are quite useful to have still also under the bed if you're co-sleeping with babe and you have random episodes of milk sick being brought up on your bed as well they're just really useful so yeah invest in some of these because they're good as well like on the changing mat if baby is like we don't want to put them straight down a cold changing mat and you've already got one out just stick that over the changing mat and then stick them on top of it but yeah they're good too and then other than that i think i would just say to take it easy because it is a massive physical thing. I didn't expect to be as wiped out as I have been. I think I thought after a couple of days, I'd be like, you know, delicate, but fine to just carry on as normal. And I haven't been able to. The pain has been so bad and it's been so uncomfortable with the stitches and the swelling that like I said, I've had to be like laying in bed basically. And I've been immobile and it's honestly infuriating because I'm not the sort of person that likes to lay in bed and do nothing. People keep saying, oh, just like find something on Netflix and just like binge watch a series. And whilst that is good, like eight days of just laying on a bed because everything else is uncomfortable and just being in pain and having so many hormones coursing through your body and also having to get to grips with like, you know, feeding and zero sleep during the night and screaming throughout the whole night from a newborn baby is quite the shock to the system. It's like Chinese water torture. So yeah, I would just say take it easy on yourself because, and don't expect to be back to your normal self for at least a couple of weeks. And you need that time to heal because I had a day, maybe like the fourth day or something where I was like, I think I feel fine. I'm gonna go in the garden and go downstairs and stand up and just do some light things like ironing. And even that, just the day of standing was not good for everything healing down there. So then I spent the last few days laying again. And it's only really today that I've 
started to think things are actually definitely on their way to healing now and I feel comfortable walking around um, but yeah I'm still still sitting on my nice little donut pillow because that is very comfy but yeah just give yourself a break let yourself recover expect it to be like Texas Chainsaw Massacre down there for a while like expect to have sore boobs expect to feel like you are going insane from the hormones and you can't cope and it's all horrible but I'm told it does get better and at least the daytimes are pretty good and yeah just be kind to yourself because it's really hard like it, it's it's definitely a journey and I'm looking forward to feeling like normal and I'm also looking forward to everything down there not looking like yeah one of my friends said they'd heard that that your vagina post delivery looks like a punched lasagna and it literally I think it does it literally does it's like nothing you've ever seen before and it's terrifying and it's like that is what even is this and it's so swollen and so painful that you're like I don't even know what bit is what like what are you what is everything so yeah just just be prepared for that get all of your supplies in get your fanny pack assembled or have your best friend assemble your fanny pack because that is a godsend and just know that everything will be okay and maybe one day you'll be naive enough to think that you want to go through it all over again and have another baby who knows but until then, that's it from me today and comment if you fancy sharing anything or giving me some tips because new mum here so any other suggestions that I haven't yet used that might be ace, hit me up and any questions as well, just give me a shout because I am an oversharer, I have no dignity left and I will answer your questions honestly. But yeah, there's a video for my new baby essentials that's also up, you can click onto my channel tab look at that and then I've got some content planned uh, yeah, in the upcoming weeks for the what was in my hospital bag which will hopefully be useful to you if you are expecting and also what's in my changing bag because I just like snooping in people's bags and yeah that's going to be a little short and sweet one that'll be there too so yeah look out for those and I will speak to you soon bye